When you buy your tiles, it's a good idea to make sure that they're in the same batch because there's a shade variation always in tiles. So we check that the variation is not a problem here. We've got two types of tiles. This is the tile we're going to use on the terrace. And we have another one which I'll open up later. And you'll be able to see for the front entrance steps. Got five bags of uh, adhesive, it's between five and six square meters using a 12 mil trowel. Based upon that, it should be between uh, six by to 30 square meters, well over what we need for what we're going to do. Probably going to go over the top of it. There are many ways to lay out. This is the one I've always found is very easy just basically overhang the step by about half an inch just initially in both steps and it tells you roughly that you're within parameters for the riser as well and the edge of the tile protector on the front now I've laid out one two three four five six seven eight tiles up to the point where is a cut. Just laid them out with approximately 3 mil gap. I've done the same the other way, laying them out one, there's approximately 10 tiles. I've laid out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 will be under the plants plus a half, or just, un, just under a half for the end. Now the reason I've done that is simply because you need to know where your cuts are going to be so if you have got in mind uh, there could be chips or there might be a slight damage or imperfection in the tile they're not expensive tiles these ones were 60 pesos or 59 pesos each they're a 400 by 400 tile it's what I call autumn colors made to look like uh, sort of like I would say 5 inch squares so that's the idea of it, the layout. That's as well before you start to even do any more work on it. Yes, earlier on I was talking about getting these tiles along the wall here parallel to an existing wall. Now you have two options. One is to cut it back a little bit and that way you mimic the edge of the tile to the edge of the wall. What I'm choosing to do is to find the happy medium between them all. The maximum distance is maybe 5 mil. So what I'm doing is I've used a straight edge, which is a piece of steel, and I've got a parallel line along the edge of this tile here, all the way along to the edge of the existing step. Now one thing I have discovered uh, is that like everything is nothing's necessarily square so I overlap it I've overlapped them to the point where now if I pick up a tile here you'll see what I mean if I put the tile to the edge of the tile below it now touches the other one so that's the vertical now as you might notice if I put it to the edge there's about almost a little over half an inch by the time you have the glue on to fill in. So what I will do is I will build that up. Uh, I can do it with plaster or I can do it with glue. I'm choosing to do it with glue because it's on a vertical. Now the overlap again is applied to the front. This way both steps will be parallel to each other and you'll have a full tile along the front of the step. <clears throat> any grinding I have to do where my foot is along this section here because it's a bit higher a bit further out I will grind that mortar back so that we can get some vertical tiles which will only be about six inches drop from the edge on the first level because this area here is going to be paved right these are the tools that I'm going to be using 
a bucket to mix up the glue, a bucket full of water, a bag full of standard adhesive, doesn't have to be heavy duty. There's two floats here, I haven't decided which one to use. This is a 12mm one I've used before and this one here is an 8mm. Um, again probably not necessary unless I'm doing it on the back of the tile. And a, a scoop, no, not a scoop, a trowel to mix up the glue. I'm going to use these uh, crosses but I'm going to use them on the 3mm, not the 5. That's 5, that's 3. So they'll be pushed in vertically and pulled out when they're, when they're set and be able to be reused. Uh, and of course a trusty level. We're going to, as the slab has already been created with a fall and it's working perfectly well, we'll mirror that fall and just use the level to make sure that they're flush or flat to each other as they go along. Now I've put half a bucket full of adhesive powder into the into the nice clean bucket, dollar a bucket, and just applying some water. Now you might say how much. Initially there are amounts that you're supposed to put in, but after many many years of tiling I do it by uh, feel alone. I'm going to try and make a mix that resembles toothpaste because um, that's the best consistency so that there's very little slump in the actual product. Slump means it doesn't collapse and flatten out higher than what you try to create. Now, what I've done there now is pretty good, nice and creamy, just get the lumps out. Some people choose to use an electric mixer, I find that hands-on doing it oneself, just mixing up by hand is a much better option. It's everybody's different choice, just the way I do it. And after all, this is a video on how I do it here in the Philippines. Just make sure all of the glue is mixed up. And as you're supposed to do, you should read the instructions. In my case, I haven't. <laughs> but I know what I'm used to doing and I know what works. So that's basically a mix. It should have a working life of a, probably, I would say, half an hour or so. Let's have a look. Get technical data. Open tile, 15 minutes. Correction time, 30 minutes. There you are. Pot life, 3 to 4 hours. Now, pot life means that it won't go off sitting in the bucket. You can still use it. And the water demand, as they call it, is seven to six litres of water to one bag of uh, powder. Now, what I didn't mention before is that that bag should do between five and six square metres of tiling using the 12 mil trowel. The idea of this is you're creating lines and uh, like little bridges and if you put it on the back of the tile as well, which is a good idea in this case, uh, you do them the opposite way. So that way when you put them down onto the surface that you're going to tile, it will have a complete area of adhesion. All right. When you're 72 and your back's been hurting for a few days, this is called tiling while you sit. Now, this is the first tile that I'm actually going to lay. Hang before. on, hang on, hang on. One. Right. Now, this is called tiling in the Philippines 
whilst you sit down. Uh, and we have a visitor, somebody trying to sell. No, thank you. Anyway, um, this is the tile we're going to lay first. So many people ask me over the years, how do you know where to start? And the answer to that is, I know. <laughs> so it's wherever you decide you're going to start. I'm starting here because it's the point of overlap. From here, all the measurements have been made, and there's a cut along that wall, and a cut along that wall. So that one's hidden, that one is so far away visually, it's not going to be a problem. So this is where I've done. I run a pencil line around there so that when now I lift the tile, you'll see there's a pencil line. Now some people are also probably saying, oh, who didn't wet the floor? Yes, I did. Not only did I wet the floor, it's uh, early in the morning here and there's moisture in the concrete. So that's what we're doing. Now just make sure there's no loose surface and we'll get the mud as I call it and we'll plonk it. This is mud, mud, glorious mud. Haven't done this for three years now. Anyway, what, you, what this trowel does, you work it in. Normally I have a, a jumbo sponge with me. And that cleans up all of the splashes and debris, which I will arrange in a minute. Right, now, if you go like that, one line, that is now able to take a tile. Now, we're going to use the one that we got out of the box. Got a slight chip on it. Uh, you won't see that by the time that's grouted. So we're going to use, we'll put it that way. Now, having decided we're going to use that tile, we limit, we are now establishing that this corner will be the same all the way along. We're not going to do them randomly. We're going to stick them down all in line, use following the same way. I don't know why we chose to do that, but I think it, it doesn't really matter too much, but that to me looks okay. They'll all be the same, evenly distributed. Now, on the back of the tile, you... Now, to me, that glue is a little bit dry, so I might have to actually add some more water to that on the next tile. But this one's here for demonstration purposes. Is fine. After all, oh, we've now got it on my foot. That's why I love tiling. Definitely need a bit of water. I think I'll do that now. I'll just wait a second. I'll bend over from my workstation. Just apply a little bit of water. Everything, everywhere in the world is different. Temperature outside, uh, amount of humidity, all those things affect um, the different products that you use. So, in my case, it's a bit too sloppy now, but that's all right. It's still going to be okay because, for my convenience, and also my peace of mind, yes, to me that's, that particular product needs a little bit more water. So even though I'm breaking that off, 
very dry. Definitely needs a bit more water at the beginning. It looks like a messy job, but once we get going, you'll realize we, this is why the first tile is important. It's the one that you play around with. Um, now, in a perfect world, this is how you would do the back of the tile. Again, covering the whole tile with glue. This stops them from becoming drummy, in other words, separ separating from the substrate, which is the surface in which you're going to, to actually glue. That's amazing glue. It's actually drying out as, as you spread it, which is not like the Aussie ones. Never mind. Now, we've got that one there. Now, we just, that one there you'll notice is going that way, and that one's going that way. So, we just drop it down to the line that we had before. Now, we'll double check on the vertical, just to make sure that the tile is in the right location. Right, it's not. So we can move that just very slightly. Whoa, Whoa it's just it's sucking down very easily. Okay, now that's our first tile effectively in place. And from that, I have to get off my chair and uh, that's the first tile in clean up the surface around. I think we're going to have to have our mix that is sloppy because the type of glue that it is, obviously it dries out quite quickly in the sense that the, you'll notice when you watch in Asia a lot of people put the the glue is very, very sloppy. Now I can see why. Because the mix is um, a sloppy kind of mix. Now, what we will do is just double check. Put the lever on there. That is going downhill. This is what we want. Good morning, Ren Ren. Good morning, you're doing a vlog. How are you? Doing great. Um, I don't know whether that's going to last that much out of one bag, because that's quite a lot of glue. Anyway, we shall do the next one now. Again, these, if for argument's sake there's a problem, we can lift it up because there's a three to four hour timeline before the glue, in effect, is no longer able to be used. No. Let's The music in the background is sounds like somebody has died and there is a funeral taking place. Should I film that? Hmm? Yeah. Well, you can film it as it goes past the door.
sorry we're just having a video of the procession for the burial of one of our neighbors Now, once uh, Jane returns with a, a big tub for me to uh, use to submerge the tile, to wet the tile, because they're ceramic tiles, they need to be submerged in water to make the water absorb into the tile, so that the adhesive doesn't just suck up and dry on the surface and then you get a separation later on. So. It's important when you do the first couple of tiles, and it's anywhere, any situation, and especially here in the Philippines when you haven't used the different types of uh, adhesive, that you experiment a little bit. And this is what's happening at the moment. We're, I've had to pull one tile up because it just clearly was not um, doing what it should do. So what I've done now is I've removed the glue back of there I'll mix up some more glue as well and uh, we'll try it a different way so each time is a trial and error but once we get the system working okay uh, we won't have this problem but we don't want the glue to dry out onto the tile and then separate from the tile itself or the concrete substrate so um, this is some of the things that we have to do we, if you're going to tile there's a lot of money tied up in the tiles in this case is 7,000 plus so we want to do the job properly save having to pull them up and do them again
more mix. I'm going to put one more here. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven tiles here. Okay. Yeah, I think I will use that. <laughs> stop for a minute. <laughs> Can you see what a 72-year-old man can do? No. He's the tiler and I'm his laborer. It saves us money for the salary. It's not crippled yet. <laughs> Say hi, Baba. Here. Hi. Hello. Well, we've certainly jumped ahead of where we were before. What a diabolical learning curve it was. The glue definitely needs a wet tile to go on. They're terracotta tiles, really, effectively, ceramic. And they need to be soaked so that the glue doesn't just uh, suck the water out and separate later. And we also had to make the glue itself the adhesive much sloppier than the mix I suggested at the beginning which was a toothpaste type which would be probably mainly used consistency in Australia but here it is definitely a sloppy mix um, and if you look at the ratio on the bag I can see why now but now we've laid about three three and a half four meters and um, it's going okay we're following the level, the slab itself was level anyway to what we wanted, the water. So what we're doing is just making sure that we lay them flat and continue them being flat. They're level across the back of the terrace so that where the cut off, the little tri strips, they won't be so noticeable when it comes to uh, tiling. What we'll try and do is use the strips of the same piece that we're using on maybe the step so or on the other side where the cuts are so that way we limit the wastage of the tire so I'm still on my seat tiling at 72 but we're doing it getting there I should have most of it most of it uh, straight laid by this afternoon so you can hang in there and watch Can you turn it off now? Are we going to turn it off? At least I can blame the squareness of the wall there on the other contractor. I don't think they necessarily know how to make a square wall, but it's pretty close. Maybe an out, out an inch for the Philippines, that's pretty good. Pretty understandable, given the rough tools they've got. But you see now that just being a slither along there, that takes account of their squareness. As long as the tiles themselves are square off the stairs, then no problem.
like an octopus sitting on a rock. My goodness, that's out of square. Never mind. Luckily, that's out of vision. It's not something you sit there and go, oh, look, the wall isn't square. At least the tiles are. So that's the main thing. And with a five, uh, three mil gap for um, spacing, unlike the majority of tiling here is just literally butted up. At least it will allow for a certain amount of movement in the slab if there is over any. Now you can see half a tile will be on this end. Again, it won't matter because you won't see it. You'll have lots of plants around in front of it anyway. And we'll probably be too drunk on Coca-Cola to notice. <laughs> Especially if it has a bit of bourbon inside it. Wink, wink.